Thank you, Baxter. Well, good morning and welcome to worship with First Baptist Church of Martinsville this last Sunday of the Easter season. So whether you are here in person with us or joining us virtually, we are glad that you have found a space of worship with us today. We want to welcome today our guests. I know we have uh, one or two here with us and we're grateful for your presence. If you need anything, feel free to let our ushers know. I have a couple of announcements for us today. First, you will see on our Lord's table, not only a beautiful uh, arrangement in the middle, but also a rose on the Lord's table. This was given in honor of Lucy Haynes Johnston. She was born on April 30th, 2021 to Caroline and Jack Johnston. And her proud grandparents are Mary Lewis and Dean Johnston and great grandparent Sue and the late Jack Lester. I hope that you will celebrate with them as they celebrate this new little one in their lives. I also want to remind you about our mission uh, emphasis for this month. The Women on Mission Action Project has asked the whole church to join in in collecting needed items for Harmony Hall Assisted Living Facility in Bassett. Uh, we want you to gather these items and drop them off here at the church and we will take them over. Uh, you will see in your bulletin a list of all of the kinds of items we will be gathering. Also, our church office would like you to send in names of graduates. If you have a graduate in your family from college or technical school, uh, we would, or high school, of course, we would love to have their name because we will honor them in June. So make sure and get that to them as soon as possible so that we can honor our graduates and our families. Also, next Sunday, May 23rd, we have a lot of things happening. First off, it's one of my favorite Sundays of the year. It's Pentecost Sunday, the birthday of the church, when the Holy Spirit rained down in fire, people spoke in all different languages, and the gospel spread all over the world. To do that, we like to celebrate here by wearing the colors of fire. So make a note, next week, wear red, orange, or yellow, and we will celebrate Pentecost together. That will remind us of the fire of the Holy Spirit. Next week, also, our Journey small group begins meeting in person. We have been meeting virtually on Thursday nights uh, with a small group of young adults, but we will start meeting at 9.30 on Sunday morning here at the church in our new Journey room, which is across from the pastor's office. We'll have coffee and donuts and community. We'll continue to learn and grow together. And we will also start our children's Sunday school hour at the same time at 9.30 in the nursery. All ages of children are welcome to attend and we will have a great time. Parents in one room, kids in the other. Also next week, after worship, we will have our monthly business meeting. It will be on Zoom at one. Uh, you'll note the time change from the bulletin. Uh, we used to have it at 12.30, but of course now we are on Zoom. We need you to have time to get home. So <laughs> one o'clock next Sunday on Zoom, we will have our regular monthly business meeting. And then beginning at 2 p.m. in the parlor, we will have visitation for Jim Barnett's family. Uh, they will be coming into town and we would like to honor them and love on them. And then at three o'clock here in the sanctuary, we will honor Jim's life with a memorial service. So I hope you are able to attend that. Friends, it is a great and wonderful time to worship God together. As we remember all that Easter means in our lives, as we anticipate Pentecost and the Holy Spirit coming, we know that God is among us. And so we call on God into our spirits. Let us begin worship together. Would you join me in our call to worship? One song that if you're as my age, you learned growing up in school, Kumbaya, meaning come by here.
Will you join me in a word of prayer? Indeed, come by here, God. Enter this space with us. Fill our hearts with your spirit. Remind us of just how loved we are and how we ought to love others fully. Remind us that your eternal life begins not in some distant future in heaven, but right now. We know you are calling us to so much more, both in this life and the next, and today we open ourselves to receive it. So please, Lord, come by here. We ask this in the name of Jesus, who taught us all to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. If you'll remain standing, we're going to sing We Praise You, O God, Our Redeemer. It's on page 377, but we're going to sing it to the tune on page 376. So it should be right across the page for you. Uh, it's to see if you can multitask. Uh, join us, please. <laughs> Our Old Testament lesson today is Psalm 1. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Not so the wicked. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. 
Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. The word of our Lord. Please stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel lesson is from John chapter 17, verses 6 through 19. Jesus is speaking these words to his Father as he is praying for his disciples. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have obeyed my word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine, and glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. When I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by that name you gave me. None has been lost except the one doomed to destruction so that scripture would be fulfilled. I am coming to you now, but I say these things while I am still in the world so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. I have given them your word and the world has hated them. For they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but the, that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself, that they too may be truly sanctified. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Christ. You may be seated. children are invited to come join me up here for a minute. <laughs> here she comes. Here she comes. <laughs> You're welcome to come too if you like. Okay. Good job. Well, hello to our one child here today and to all of you who are joining us virtually. Today we heard about Jesus praying. Do you see this picture? That's Jesus praying. How do you pray? How do you pray? It's a picture of Jesus praying. We put our hands together, right? We do this at school, right? Put our hands together and we talk to God, right? That's how we pray. Well, today we heard Jesus pray a prayer. And when Jesus was on earth, he prayed to God and he said, thank you for all of these who are followers of me. And he said, I want you to protect them and I want you to give them courage to tell the truth in all things. You pray in, you pray in chapel, I know. You pray in chapel time, you pray in big church, you pray over your meals at school. Don't you pray at school too? Well, why don't we, like Jesus, pray for our friends? Jesus was praying for his friends, his disciples. We, we can thank God and pray for their protection. We can pray that they always share the truth. 
why don't we do that today? You want to do that today? Yeah. yeah. Let's put our hands together and just, just repeat after me. You guys can do this too. All right. Thank you, God, for my friends. Thank you, Thank God, you God, for, for my, my friends. friends. May we get along and love each other. May, May we, we get, get along and, and love each other. other. Protect my friends. Protect, Protect my, my friends. friends. Let us tell the truth in love. Let us tell the truth in love. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good job. So we can remember to pray for our friends. Can you say that? Pray for our friends? Jesus. That's Jesus. And we pray for our friends just like Jesus did. I think Miss Becky has some songs for us today. Two songs. Okay. Two songs. One is the most beloved hymn in the whole world, Jesus Loves Me. That's the first one. And then one that we learned as little children. Praise Him, praise Him, all you little children. And then we're going to love Him, love Him, all you little children. So if you will jump to your feet, congregation and choir, we're going to sing with Elena. Can we do that? All right. You ready? Anytime, Baxter. Jesus loves me, this I know. Praise him, praise him, all you little children. Remember that one? Praise him, praise him, all you little children. God is love, God is love. Praise him, praise him, all you little children. God is love, God is love. About love him. Love him, love him, all you little children. God is love, God is love. Love him, love him, all you little children. God is love, God is love. She's trying. Good job. Well, thank you all for helping us today. All right, you can hand out with Miss Alicia now.
we have gathered our tithes and offerings a little bit differently in this season. Whether we dropped them in the plate on the way in, gave online or mailed in, the beauty of it is that God can do with it so much more, however it's given. And so we're grateful for that today. Will you join me in prayer? God, continue to give us generous hearts and open hands. In these days when so many other things compete for our resources, may we remember that when we give to your kingdom work, we see the beauty of your community growing in love. Remind us of this as we write our checks and drop our money off in the offering plate or click to give online, God, that whatever we give and however we give, we are part of something so much larger than ourselves. And we are blessing others with what you have blessed us with. God, we ask in these moments that we honor you with our gifts. In Jesus' name, amen. As I told the little one, we talk about prayer today, specifically about a prayer from Jesus to God at the end of his ministry. And I wonder if any of us can honestly say that we regularly stop to tell God how our day went. Or are we a little bit intimidated not sure what words to use because prayer is such a holy and sacred moment. You know, I think prayer is kind of an enigma. <laughs> it is a corporate thing that we do in worship. It's done in reverence and in awe. It's also a one-on-one -on -one conversation with someone dear to our heart. It is both and. If you were to ask me that question, which is it? The answer is yes. I mean, on the one hand, we pray in worship to revere God, the God we love and we serve. On the other hand, God wants to know us personally and intimately and ask us to engage with the divine on a deep and personal level. So if prayer is both and, and if Jesus teaches us to pray, both corporately and personally, then when we read Jesus' very intimate prayer with God here in our text today, I think we have some things to learn, both about prayer itself and about how Jesus loved and considered those who loved him. As I was saying, this prayer this is kind of a farewell, farewell prayer at the end of Jesus' ministry. Basically, he's telling God all that's happened and all he hopes for his followers as he leaves the earth physically. He wants the best for us, for us to understand truly what has been taught, for us to witness to God's love and to live into God's unity. And his specific requests in this prayer, I think, are telling. So I wanted to just kind of, it's kind of a long prayer, so I wanted to break it down. Let's look at what Jesus prays about. Well, first he tells God, I did what you said. I taught them what I know from you. And I shared the deeper meanings of scripture. I came from you and you sent me, and I made sure 
that they were understanding what I was teaching was from you. Second, he prays for God to protect and care for those who would carry on this message. This word for protect in the Greek has overtones of attend to carefully or pay attention to or take care of. It's the same kind of word used to describe how parents care for children. Jesus knows in this relational prayer the love of parent to child, and he wants his disciples to know it too. Third, he prays for our unity. He wants us to act like we are one family, one community, just as God and Jesus and the Spirit are all one entity. Of course, we all know we fall short of that pretty regularly. Churches alone are splitting at the seams because there's so much outside division creeping into church buildings and taking over the unity Christ is praying for. Hardened hearts and angry speech take over our discourse, and that unity that Christ prayed for gets shattered. But here, in Jesus' prayer, he wants more for us, for us to consider others more than ourselves, to pray for and to love others who are different from us, even when it's hard. The fourth thing he prays for is sanctification or holiness. And I'm careful to point out, this is not just about good deeds or being a good person or proving oneself holy. It's the idea that we are set apart for God's work. Jesus prays here that as we are set apart, we would recognize why we do what we do in the midst of this world that does things so very differently. And please understand, the world, this doesn't mean that all humanity and the earth are deeply evil. I mean, God created this beautiful world and the people in it, and he called them good. But what it does mean is that we as humans, this gathering of all humanity, we regularly distance ourselves from the creator, both in word and deed. And Jesus wants to close that gap to draw us toward the divine and then share that light and truth with the rest of the world. So, when we read this prayer, I think an appropriate question to ask is, who are we? Who are we to Christ? Who are we to God, the Father? And I think the first thing that I see is that we are a prayed-for people. We are a loved people. We are a people called to abundant eternal life that begins now in this world and continues for eternity in the presence of God. And second, we are a people called to do something. We are set apart to do something, and that is to live into truth. And hear me when I say truth is thrown around a lot, and it often in Christian circles can be some literal interpretation of one text that becomes judgy and cruel. That is what happens so often. But what I think Jesus is praying for is not that kind of truth, the truth we hit people over the head with. He's calling us to the bigger truth, truth of God's overarching purpose for humanity, God's love for this whole world, God's light that shines in our darkness. But. I ask, how do we live into this kind of truth? How should it affect who we are? Well, this kind of truth is one that isn't just how we speak. It isn't just how we act. It is also how we reconcile. It's all three. Speech, action, reconciliation. The truth in speech, we should tell the truth. Seems pretty simple. Jesus said our yes should be yes, our no should be no. We don't lie, we don't stretch the truth, we don't gossip. We're honest, we're upfront, we're kind. This is truth in action. We also tell the truth in how we act. We live as a whole person wherever we go. 
It's not just about what we say, it's about our integrity, how we live. Is who we are around religious folks the same as who we are elsewhere? And I don't mean to say that we need to try to integrate that facade we put on for church to the rest of the world. In fact, I mean quite the opposite. I mean to say that we admit who we are, faults and all, in church. That we quit trying to one-up each other with our holiness and just be who we are. Beloved, learning, growing people, trying to follow God together. And it's also a truth that reconciles. We tell the truth in how we reconcile with one another. We give up a measure of our own need to be right and open ourselves to others, like Jesus taught us every time he sat with an outsider and started up a conversation. Every time he drew into the fold those who the religious folk thought didn't belong. Jesus tells the disciples and has told the disciples over and over and over, don't be a part of this world. That is, don't let this world's humanity's greed and selfishness shape your essential identity, your faith or your values. Jesus made it clear in this prayer and elsewhere that there is no escaping this world. We are called instead to live in this world, but do it differently. Loving others as ourselves, giving sacrificially of our time and our resources, and being faithful and truthful and open in the ways the rest of the world is afraid to. And we do that kind of growing in Christian community. Together we work to be unified and loving in ways that I think are unrecognizable in this look out for number one kind of society. So Jesus isn't asking God here to help us escape the world, but to live in it fully, the way he intended us to learn in his teachings. He wants us to find that joy and hope in Christian community and to share that with the rest of the world. And God sent Jesus, sent Jesus to us. And what did Jesus do? He sent us. We are sent to engage the world with this love and this hope. We aren't called to hide in our sanctuaries all the time, though these spaces for holy gathering may be very vital and important. Instead, we are called to worship here, to grow here, and then to leave here. We are sent into the world. We're not trying to get out of the world. And I think that's one place we churches get it wrong a lot. We want to be the gatekeepers. We want to put a gate on the door of God's community, make sure that only the worthy enter or something. We don't always do it knowingly, but on some level, some bias we don't even know we had, we do it. And then we all get together. We pretend we've figured out holiness. And we don't get to grow because we aren't being honest with one another. We aren't living into that truth Jesus is praying about. But Jesus wants us to live in truth and to share truth. Jesus wants us to be in the world, but not act selfishly like the world. Jesus wants us to love each other as he loved us. And the fact that he spends so much time praying to God, asking for this, I think that means he cares a great deal for us and how we carry on his message. This world that God created, God loves. And God wants to bring us closer in, to share with us the beauty of that relationship. And God sent Jesus to help us learn how to do just that so that he could bridge those gaps we create with our own selfishness and brokenness. Jesus came so that we might have life and have it abundantly and eternally, so that we might have it in community relationship with God and with God's children. 
I hope that as we reflect on who we are as individuals and as a faith community, and we'll be doing a lot of that in the days and weeks to come, I hope that we keep Jesus' prayer here in our minds. I hope that we become who he prayed we would be. How he prayed that we would be protected, that we would be. And yet, how we would be sent by God's Spirit and that we would respond. I think that we will discern more about ourselves if we will listen to how Jesus spoke of us in his prayers. Amen. As we sing a final hymn, you are welcome to respond to God. I will be down front, and you are welcome to come, whether it's to accept Jesus as Lord, whether it's to say, man, I have not been the person Jesus has called me to be, and I'm ready to be. We can pray together. Whatever it may be, you are welcome. Come. Our invitational hymn today is Lord Be Glorified, found on page 537. Would you stand with me, please? Go now in love and truth, sharing the message of God's reconciliation with this world in Christ, with all you meet. Go in honesty and openness. Go in unity and hopefulness. Go with the promise of abundant and eternal life in Christ and in relationship to one another. In the name of Christ.